Amen. 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 Good morning, church. Well, let me see all your faces. Let me see if you're still in one pieces <laughs> or pieces. Uh, welcome to Alaska City Blessing Church. <laughs> you know, at least that's how it feels this past few days. But if you're here, it means you more than survive, you thrive. Amen. So welcome to Boston once again. <laughs> all right. So we're going to continue um, what we have learned. And we, I want to continue my series on uh, the sermon and the uh, uh, our reflection about knowing God. So this is Knowing God Part 2. And I want to encourage you to get your Bible ready. And also, uh, every sermon that we have is on YouTube. If you feel like you need to listen to it uh, again, it's, it's on YouTube. And feel free to reach out to us, to Carousel Leaders. If you, you, if you need more notes about it, we would be, uh, we'd be glad to make it available for you as well. All right? So this year... We know that it is something that is uh, very, um, very crucial for us. And um, I've shared with you um, from time to time, and we're going to continue to share this with all of us, that this year our vision and team is about making a stand on also taking action. All right. So this year our vision and team is standing firm and take action. Stand firm and take action. And our... Uh, key verse is found in Daniel chapter 11, verse 32b, and I have shared this with you how I look at this as both a command and a promise. Daniel 11, verse 32b, it says that the people who know their God shall stand firm and take action. The people who know their God shall stand firm and take action. So it is my desire, and it is not just my dream or my ambition, but I believe it is the command, it is something that the Bible would want every church, every believer, that as a church we're not just, you know, retaining the size, but anemic, you know, have no power, have a presence, but just exist, no, no impact, nothing. But I'm believing that God is calling up His church to rise up. I'm believing that God is calling us and endowing us with such privilege and blessings, not just for us to be just a recipient of His blessing, but I believe there is a purpose for every blessings that God has given to us. So that being said, we have received a command to know Him more, to, 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 to learn to know Him more so that we can stand firm and take action. And I don't know about you, but more and more as we see throughout what's going on in our surrounding, how we need to know Him more because I think that is the only anchor of hope for us in this society, how we can weather ourselves and not just passing by, but to be victorious and thriving, we need to know Him more, which is the God of not only the yesterday, but today and the God of forever. So we also receive a promise at the same time that when we or if we know God, we will be able to stand firm and take action. So we are given a promise that if we know God, we will be able to stand firm and take action. Amen. Let me, let me repeat that again so it will, uh, it will sink into our heart. We are given a promise that if or when we know God, we will be able to stand firm and take action. All right? So that's 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 big deal right there. That's big deal. I hope every single one of us uh, get this. And this is going to be something that that is going to be what, what sets the tone for our learning this year. All right? So our goal, our goal is not just to learn more facts about God. Our goal is not just to learn more facts about God, but to get to know God in a more powerful and personal way. Our goal is not just to know more, you know, I mean, it's, of course, the, the, the verses and the scriptures are important. It is, it is something that is very centered to our faith. But our goal is not just to learn more facts about God, but to put it into practice, to see it uh, become reality, to, to, to see it uh, impacting first our life, to become a personal experience for us, then it becomes a life that flows out of us. So our goal is not just to know more facts about God, but to get to know God in a more and personal, in, in a more powerful and personal way. Because I do believe that this is His desire 
for the church to be alive, for every believer to become salt and light, for every believer to become messenger of the gospel of peace. I mean, this faith that we have, that we embrace, is not just one that becomes very personal to us, but it has also become very demonstrative. It's, very, it's, very, uh, it's something to be displayed for the world to see. And I believe that if it's not now, then when? If it's not you, then who else? God, God has no one else but all of us as His church, as His people. So the way He's going to reveal His glory is through His creation, first and foremost, and through you and I, and through His people. So my desire, this is my prayer, that, that, that this year, you know, at least in the milestone of our learning and pursuit about God, it's not just knowing more, but experiencing Him in such a powerful and personal way. Amen, church? So I'm reminded by a word that was said by A.W. Tozer a long time ago. And he says, what comes into our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. What comes into our mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. So um, sadly, though, um, it's very interesting upon discovering it when I am talking to many people is that many times um, the idea, the identity about God is pretty much formulated and confined with our own mind. So we want to approach it in a biblical way. Instead of us having an opinion about God, we want our opinion to be shaped by the Word of God. We want what we think about God is not our own idealism it's not our own preference but we want that our understanding about God comes straight from the revelation because when it comes about God we're not discovering him he's revealing himself to us so we don't get to define him but we get to accept him as he revealed himself to us so sadly um, we know that we're not alone in this world and if you are living in this modern society here and, here and now, we know that we are offered, without even asking, we are offered, you know, um, worldviews, um, ideals, knowledges, uh, theories. Uh, if you go to school, you know this. Every day, your professors are offering to you worldviews, uh, uh, frames of seeing life, seeing world, and seeing God as, as they would have believed it. Something that is formulated by scholars, something that is formulated by personal man's experience. But our goal and our duty as, a, as the church of God, as Christian followers of Christ, is, is to be faithful to his personal, his revelation about himself. Our goal is that we do not redefine his revelation about himself, but we emulate his revelation about himself. Because we are nothing but a canvas to reflect, to declare the glory of God. All right? So we're going we're gonna to go deeper into that. When I was studying this text, I looked at many other books, uh, in particular books of uh, Old Testaments and the prophets that are similar to our contemporaries today. And the more you study the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, the more you realize that what we are experiencing today is not exclusive just to our time. It's not just us. If we think life now is hard, well, guess again. You know, it's been hard since the beginning. You know, if you think that your challenge today is exclusive only to your generation, well, guess again. It's not true. Because if you look in the Bible, it's the same. You know, it's always, you know, we're going through opposition. We're going through tough times. Uh, difficulties in economical, in safety, in so many other aspects. It's been going on since even the day of the Old Testament. So I, was, I came across a book uh, in, in the Old Testament from the book of Hosea. So I want to ask you to turn with me to the book of Hosea chapter 6. I'm reading from the ESV version. And there's an invitation there that really, you know, uh, captured my heart. Hosea chapter 6, uh, verse, beginning with verse 1, it says, Come, let us return to the Lord, for He has torn us that He may heal us. He has struck us down and He will bind us up. After two days, He will revive us 
and on the third day he will, ra he will raise us up, that we may live before him. Let us know. Let us press on to know the Lord. His going out is sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. All right, so verse 3 says, let us know, let us press on to know the Lord. Let us know and let us press on to know the Lord. His going out is sure as the dawn. He will come to us as the showers, as the spring rains that water the earth. So Hosea is one of the prophets that was assigned to God, uh, to the Israelites during the, king, during the time of King Jeroboam. And this book is a classic book as is found in many other Old Testament, how God sent his prophet to remind Israel of how they live their life. You know, so they're living their life uh, despite being a constant recipient of God's goodness, God's blessing, God's mercy, God's protection. And yet they keep to, uh, they keep, um, they keep forgetting about him. They keep going astray and worshiping other uh, strange and foreign God. And they keep living their life as they please us and forgetting about God. And as a result, they reap the consequences of their own rebellion. But God being faithful at that time, even before the dawn of the Messiah, which was his son, Jesus Christ, he sent his servant, he sent his prophets to remind them. And Hosea is one of them. And the central theme here is return to God. Return to Him. Because even though He has been harsh, because even though He has judged you because of your sin, but He says, God is surely going to be merciful and restore you and embrace you. All right? So particularly verse 3, it really struck a tone within my heart when He say, let us know Him. Let us press on to know the Lord. The word press on there, there's an emphasis of, of an extra added effort being given to do something. Now, we all are familiar with extra added effort in our life, um, in, 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 in our career, in everything that we do. I mean, we live under this uh, a tenet that if you want to be good at what you do, then you must put effort. And if you want to be the best, you must put effort extra added effort you know i mean if you want to stand out from the rest then you must put extra added effort so we are not strange to this concept and we've lived our life by this credo in fact you know if you are in a workplace you know that that's what is sought after in you your employers your boss wants to see whether or not you're going to put extra added effort because there are so many people after your job gunning for your position so we're not we're not strange to that idea, but sadly, uh, I'm reminded that when it comes to God, when it comes to our issues of spiritual matters, we're just casual about it. In fact, it's probably the last in our priority, and we don't, we don't I mean, we're just casual about it. Uh, some of us, we're just even spontaneous when it comes to God, and by that, I mean, when we have problem, we come to Him, or, you know, when we see our meal, we come to him. You know, no efforts needed. It's just spontaneous. I mean, let me be one of the let me be one of the person who remind you again, return to God. Let us put extra added effort to know him. Because if there's one simple prayer that sure enough will be answered to God, is this prayer, Lord. I want to know you more. Reveal yourself to me. I guarantee you, that is one simple prayer that sure will be answered. So I want to encourage you, don't wait yet another year for you, especially, especially at your youth right now, to not get to know him, to not put extra added effort to know God. Please, don't let any moment in your life get by without you to put extra added effort to know Him. Because it is worth your life to know Him. I promise you, He's going to reveal Him Himself in such a way that will make a very difference in your life. Alright? So here's the thing about God. 
I want to say this in this church. I know many of us probably would agree, but believe it or not, we're living in a time and day where don't not even there are people, even probably in this room, that doubt that God is real. God is real. You know, what is there to know about God? God is real. So He is as real as the air that we breathe. He is as real as the person next to you. Why don't you turn to your friend next to you, left and right? <laughs> it's, God is as real. <laughs> Just don't hit them, all right? <laughs> but God is real. God is real as your own physical body. He's real. All right? So how do we know He's real? Because we found Him in so many things surrounding us. And the first thing that we learn, as the Bible would reveal to us, is that we found Him in the declaration of the creation. Creation declares the glory of the Lord. In Psalm chapter 19, verse 1 to 2, Psalms 19, verse 1 to 2, listen to this. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day, they pour, they, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. Wow. So what David was saying is that day after day, night after night, time after time, creation never stopped preaching about the glory of God. You see the wonders of the world, you see the glory of God. You see the awesome wonder. I mean, we are privileged living in this state of Alaska <laughs> to, you know, see the beauty of the, of, the, of the land, the landscape of this region. You know, I, I used to came uh, from another state that is similar to Mars, uh, desert and nothing but desert. But now as I move here, you know, even desert is very mesmerizing. But as I come here, I, I marvel a lot, and it is later on in my life, you know, recently, that I took after the joy of walking and especially enjoying the park, the lake, and, and I can tell you that it is one of the most spiritual things. Maybe I'm getting older, but I, I can sense the presence of God in His creation. If, if, if you are uh, cooped up in your cubicle, in your two-by-two two all the time, or in your uh, desk all the time chained to your computer, let me tell you, you're missing. You're missing. If you're not out and see the wonder of His creation, you're missing out. But you know what? God is as real as the creation, as the surrounding of us. And... When we talk about the creation declares His glory, it's not just the, the landscape, the mountain, the animals, but also the people that we get to, the privilege to share this life with. We see them and we see the glory of God. That's why I never, it never stopped to amaze me how, you know, when God created each and every one of us, He says, let us make man according to our image and our likeness. We see them. But we are also mindful of the fact that we're also messed up by the presence of sin. But nevertheless, that's the major theme of our faith is that He come to reclaim what is His. He sent His only Son, Jesus Christ, to redeem the lost. So God is real and we know Him from the creation, from, 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 from the creation that we get to live with surrounding us, all right? And then what we also learn is that we know Him, the realness and the guarantee, the assurance about Him in the firmness and certainty of His Word. His Word reveals Him. Remember when I told you, you know, when it comes to God, it's not us discovering Him. Oh, let me tell you something. I just discovered God. I realize. No, it's Him choosing to reveal Himself to us. All right? So, and He reveals Himself to every believer, every single person. And the choice is given to every single one of us freely to come to Him as He would desire to come to us. So the Word of God reveals Him. Look at 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. 
2 Peter chapter 1, verse 20 to 21. And it says, Above all, you must realize that no prophecy in Scripture ever came from the prophet's own understanding or from human initiative. No, those prophets were moved by the Holy Spirit and they spoke from God. So one of the best way for us as we answer this invitation to know about him is that we ought to come to him through his word. You know, I mean, I know when we said the word knowing God, I, every time I look at that word, I felt so minuscule. I felt, I felt so small because, you know, the idea that um, me as a creation Trying to know my creator is, is, is very, very humbling. You know, imagine um, if you were to fill out, you look at this bottle cap and you try to fit the whole Pacific Ocean into this. That's how it is when we attempt to try to understand about God. In fact, the early church father, Augustine, says, if you can understand it, it's not God. Because it's God. You know, we are but a fraction of who he is. And we try to formulate him. You know, it's like trying to fit the whole Pacific Ocean into this bottle cap. But here's the thing. That's why he chose to reveal himself. And what we have here on our hand in his word is that we have the whole Pacific Ocean come to us. We have the whole Pacific Ocean being given to us. So, what a shame it is for us believers. What a shame it is for us who call ourselves followers of Christ. But we don't put extra added effort to dig deep into the word of God. I mean, most of us, we read many, many other books more. I mean, I know one part of the resolution usually in every new year is that, oh, I want to read more books. I want to read like, you know, uh, uh, good to great or whatever. Uh, what is in the management or self-help book these days? I don't know. Uh, I want a uh, 12 highly effective habit of, oh, I don't know. But what about the book that has been still in print, been translated into more languages, into the rest of the world, still bestseller, the most, the most stolen book ever in the bookstore. <laughs> Seriously. You know, the most bestseller. And what's more, let's be done with all the statistics. It is the word that is yes and amen. It is the word that has been before our time. And it's a, you know, it's going to be around even after our time. The book that says, heaven and earth will fade. Of which it says, heaven and earth will fade, but... His word will still remain. You know, not one iota from what is written will fall to the ground unfulfilled. God revealed himself through his word. God revealed himself through his word. And you don't want to put extra added effort to dig into it. What a shame it is. You have the whole Pacific Ocean at your disposal. But you are contend with the small that is here you know with here in western world we like to exert our opinion on everything oh in my opinion you know i'd like to think it's good that you are thinking but believe me your thoughts is not gonna make you it's not gonna save you it's not gonna lead you to a discovery that sets you free if ever many of us are in chain because of our self-destructive thoughts we felt we are enlightened. We thought we're enlightened. But actually, there's thick darkness in our own thoughts. That's why we need him. We need redemption. Man needs God. God loves man. And the more you look at this, the more you will discover how much he loves you. The more you look at this, the more you understand that the God that we seek to put extra added effort to know is the kind of God who is not out to get us. He's out to get us, of course. He's out to love us. 
is out to rescue us. He's out to pick us up and elevate us. He's out to redeem us. He's out to deliver us. He's out to heal us. He's out to bless us. But he's not out to get us by the way of some would believe that he's out there waiting for us to mess up and judge us. He doesn't need to judge us. We will be judged by our own sin. We will be judged by our own limitation. But we need to discover the reality about him as he chose to reveal himself without being polluted and corrupted by our own puny opinion. Don't you just hate it when people make assumptions about you? Hello? Don't you just hate it that just because of one simple mistake, just one time when you have lapse of judgment, but people pin it on you forever for the rest of your life? You know? Well, when you think that you know God and you can find him in your own preference, opinion, and ideologies, that's what it's like. Set him free. Let him reveal himself. Discover him as he desired to be discovered. Turn to his word and know him the way he wants you to know him. It will blow your mind in a big way, in a good way. Put extra added effort to get to know his word as he desired to reveal himself to you. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17. This is the word of Paul to his son Timothy. He says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. God is real. God loves us. God has a purpose for us, and his purpose is righteousness, life. So what a shame it is for us to be putting extra added effort on so many other things in life, but not to put an extra added effort on the very thing that builds us, on the very thing that heals us, on the very thing that saves us, on the very thing that makes us the best that we can be. So church, I want to encourage you. I mean, it's not more knowledge, it's not more theory, it's not more practice. But we seek to know God in a more powerful and personal way. In a way that your life will never be the same again. In such a way that your encounter toward Him would give you the desire to bring others to encounter Him as well. After all, we are the salt and the light. Amen? And it is that promise to us that if and when we know him, we're going to be able to stand firm and take action. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this promise. We desire to know you more as you would want us to be known. Lord, our goal is not just to learn more facts about you, but to get to know you in a more powerful and personal way. Help us, O Lord. Help this church. I desire, Lord, to see every believer in this house to encounter you, to experience you in such a way. Help us to heed the invitation that Hosea once issued to the people of Israel. Let us know God. Let us press on to know the Lord. Let us put extra added effort with all seriousness, with all of our heart, our mind, to get to know Him because He is longing for us to experience, to experience Him in such a way that the world can never reveal to us. So I pray, O oh Lord, I want to run to You, O oh God. Encourage your church, O Lord, to run to you and to come to you in such a way. Help us, O God, to make you as our number one priorities. Help us, O God, to make you as the center of our life. 
Only then and only then will we experience a divine order in our life, a divine purpose, when you become the number one in our life. Help us, O oh God, Holy Spirit, breathe life into the Word of God that we are reading. Help us to encounter you. Help us to know you in such a way. I pray, Lord, that you will create such a hunger and thirst for your word, for your understanding, for your revelation, for your knowledge across every spectrum of discipline in this house. I pray that there will come a time when all the business person in this place will become so hungry for your word and revelation that can help them and guide them in their, in their decision making, in their life, maneuvering through the work-life balance, oh God. I pray, O oh Lord, that there will be such a revelation, such a revelation of your being, O oh God, that will revolutionize how our students will conduct their life, their, their pursuit of higher learning. Because your word says that the beginning of all knowledge is fear of the Lord. The beginning of riches is the fear of the Lord. What a shame it is for us to be looking for what only you can give but searching it in all the wrong places, in all, with all the wrong methods. Father, I pray that you will touch every heart. Holy Spirit, breathe life into our gathering. And I pray, Lord, that it is not more facts, more theories, more charts, but more of you, more of you. In such a powerful and personal way, no more stale Christianity, no more lame faith, but I pray, Lord, that you reveal yourself in such a lively and dynamic and we're not looking to just manage our heart and thoughts, but we desire to have a complete transformation of our heart and thoughts, Lord. Because there's nothing good worth <laughs> salvaging about our broken thoughts. What we need is a new mind that is in you. Lord, we, we, we're not, it's not waste management that we're after, but we are into waste disposal, oh God. Complete sanitation, Lord. Father, I pray that your spirit will touch every heart in this place, oh God. I pray that there's such a hunger that will begin to boil within the heart and mind of every believer in this room that can hear the sound of my voice. And even those that are not in this room but listening to this message, that, that it will be like something boiling within our heart that will cause us to be so hungry and thirst for you. Hungry and thirst for your revelation. Hungry and thirst, oh God, for righteousness, for peace and joy that is the kingdom of God. For fellowship with one another, oh God. For justice. Oh, Father, I pray, oh God, that your church will once again rise up and your power will be displayed in such a mighty way. Because your promise is true. Let us know. Let us press to know the Lord. He's going out as sure as the dawn. For surely you will show yourself forth. Just like the break of dawn. You will come to us as a shower. You will surely come to us just like the rain and springtime. As the spring rains that waters the earth. You never fail us, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. So grateful for you, Lord. So grateful for your word. Call us to you, Lord. Reveal yourself to us, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus.